On September 3rd, 1784, George Washington, statesman and general of young America, set out to visit the land of his youth, the fertile lands west of the Blue Ridge that he first set eyes on as a young surveyor 37 years before. The reverend leader of our newborn nation had people or family in Berkeley County and some 1,500 acres of land called Rock Hall, which included his very first purchased land, some 550 acres that he bought with the money Lord Fairfax paid him for surveying his vast land holdings long ago. Trekking slowly from the Blue Ridge Mountains towards his brother Charles Washington's home, George may have fondly recalled his first impressions of the bountiful scenery all those years ago. We went through most beautiful groves of sugar trees and spent the best part of your day in admiring ye trees and richness of your land. The next day, he wrote more, almost rapturously. The land, exceedingly rich and fertile all your way, produces abundances of grain, hemp, and tobacco. He would soon see his land, which he surveyed himself November 24, 1750, and it was called Bullskin Plantation. And he would discuss farming techniques and collect monies from his tenant farmers, but closer at hand on the road was his first stop, Happy Retreat, the home of his brother Charles. Then, only two structures connected with the breezeway. George wrote of this visit of that night in 1784, seeing old war buddies and friends dating back to the French and Indian War days with General Braddock, Ralph Warmly, who was there, was the guy that George persuaded to buy land here at a poker game in Williamsburg. And there was Colonel Warner Washington, George's uncle, brother Charles, and one of George's oldest and dearest friends, Daniel Morgan, the hero of Cowpens and a soldier's soldier. But George's purpose was not just social. He wanted to unify the polite Tidewater moneyed societies with the bustling, productive frontier settlements by creating a continuous water route, part natural, part man-made, and bringing all new technology to bear to this goal. He wrote in his diary, I conversed a good deal with General Morgan and on the nearest and best communication between the eastern and western waters. He seemed to have no doubt but that the counties of Frederick, Berkeley, and Hampshire would contribute freely toward the extension of the navigation of the Potomac, as well as opening a road from east to west. The men at Happy Retreat could not yet know that east and west would be met but by the railroad, and not by rivers, canals, and inventions such as the steamboat. So, George Washington bade farewell from his brother and friends, and he pushed on in 1784 toward Warm Springs, or the town of Bath, where destiny awaited. And he wrote in his diary of March 6th, remained in Bath all day and was shown a model of a boat constructed by the ingenious Mr. Rumsey for ascending rapid currents by mechanism the principles of this were not only shown and fully explained to me, but to my very great satisfaction, exhibited in practice. Meantime, George asked this James Rumsey to do some work for him, building a 36 foot by 24 foot dwelling house, which prophetically, James Rumsey had great difficulty building. But for some time after that, anyway, Rumsey and Washington shared a dream of steamboats to build a nation.
Another one bites the dust Another one 